Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Blast in Pakistan kills five policemen during polio vaccination drive. Human rights activists worldwide express solidarity with Baloch protesters. And security forces intensify anti-terror operations in Jammu and Kashmir. Let's begin the show with Pakistan, a country that never stopped supporting terrorism despite international condemnation and warnings. Islamabad now finds itself in a pit that it had dug for others, as Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan, an offshoot of the Afghan Taliban, has been targeting Pakistan repeatedly, resulting in the loss of life and property. However, repeated attacks by the outfit prove that the country is incapable of dealing with the menace. We have a report. The year 2021 marked the resurgence of the Afghan Taliban and with their growing influence, the activities of Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan intensified in Waziristan, situated at the doorstep of Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and the federally administered tribal areas. The TTP consistently targeted Pakistan, leaving behind a devastating trail of destruction, loss of life and property. It became evident that the nation, which had harbored and supported Taliban leaders for decades, was now facing the bitter consequences of its past actions. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who once celebrated the Taliban's rise, painted it as the liberation from slavery and deemed the newly formed Taliban government as pro-Pakistan. However, the grave consequences of such statements became apparent over time. In a recent incident, an improvised explosive device targeted a police truck transporting around 25 policemen for anti-polio campaign duties in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The bomb blast resulted in the death of five soldiers, with dozens more injured. The attack occurred in Mamund, Bajor district, an area approximately 14 kilometers away from Afghanistan, witnessing increased attacks since the Taliban's control of Kabul in 2021. Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan later claimed responsibility for this attack. Jo basically hai, uh, hai ki hum har polio team ko, uh, usme ek banda ho, do bande ho, hum unko, uh, polio ki, uh, police ki security from karte तो ये सिलसिले में बदारी बात है ये दूर के इलाकों में यहां से लाइन से हम नफरी रवाना करते हैं तो वो ट्रक जो था वो टारगेट था जुन का और उसको उन्होंने टारगेट किया उसमें पांच हमारे शहदा की तदाद है और उसमें 20 किस जो है वो जख्मी है अभी तक टीटीपीज ब्रूटलिटी हाइलाइटेड बाय द 2014 पेशावर आर्मी स्कूल अटैक वेयर 150 पीपल इंक्लूडिंग 134 इनोसेंट स्टूडेंट्स lost their lives, showcased Pakistan's vulnerability. The Islamabad regime, which once sheltered and financed the TTP, now found itself with limited options, resorting to blaming the Afghan Taliban for providing safe havens to terrorists. The gravity of the situation necessitated a firm response and serious attention from both the regime and defense forces. Reports revealed 665 attacks in KP since June 2022 emphasizes the urgency for structural changes to prevent further loss of lives. Therefore, Pakistan must commit to a comprehensive structural change for the betterment of the situation, avoiding the loss of more personnel and civilians. Pakistan possibly did not um, calculate or account for this state of affairs because if you look at Pakistan strategizing it is short term they live from strategy to strategy tactic to tactic the first strategy to get the Americans out of Afghanistan has succeeded not what about part two 
part two is a problem because the Taliban in Afghanistan have made it very clear that they are not willing to act as Pakistan's proxies. Certainly when it comes to the activities of TTP in Pakistan. And the second part is there are now non-state actors in Pakistan, actually terrorists, who now are using their resources, their training against the Pakistan state. Under these circumstances, for the ISI to control them is impossible. The Pakistan army would have to step in and undertake such steps that the populations where these activists or these terrorists are located would be violently alienated. So the Pakistan is caught in a trap of its own making. I'm not too sure the Pakistanis will be able to do something about it. As the nation grapples with financial deficits, political turmoil and the repercussions of supporting terrorism, it becomes clear that a drastic change is imperative. The path ahead is challenging, but Pakistan has no choice but to confront its past mistakes and rectify its course to break free from the shackles of terrorism, forging a brighter and peaceful future for its people. In India's Jammu and Kashmir, terrorists supported by Pakistan are attempting to destabilize the peace and create chaos. However, the security forces in Jammu and Kashmir are operating at a heightened state of readiness, diligently working to dismantle the terrorist network within the region. In a recent operation, the Jammu and Kashmir police, in cooperation with security forces, successfully eliminated the Lashkar terrorist in Shopia, South Kashmir. Police records affirm the involvement of the slain terrorist in various terrorism-related offences. We have a report. The vigilance of Indian security forces has intensified amidst the evolving tactics employed by Pakistan-based terrorists seeking to infiltrate Jammu and Kashmir's territory and disrupt the peace in the region. On January 6, Jammu and Kashmir police in collaboration with security forces, successfully neutralized a terrorist in Shopia, South Kashmir. Acting on specific intelligence regarding terrorist presence in the Chotigam area of Shopia district, a joint cordon and search operation was swiftly launched by Shopia police, the Indian Army and CRPF in the targeted area. As the joint search party approached the suspected location, the concealed terrorist opened fire indiscriminately, prompting an effective retaliation and ensuing in an encounter. This encounter resulted in the elimination of a terrorist associated with Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba terror outfit and his body was subsequently recovered from the encounter site. As per police records, the slain terrorist identified as Bilal Ahmad Bhatt was involved in several terror crime cases, including the killing of an army personnel, Umair Fayaz. Bhatt was also involved in the killing of two non-local labourers and Kashmiri pundits in the region. Yesterday, uh, Shopiya Police got an input from which there was a terrorist in the area of the small Shopiya Shopiya. तो इसी खबर पे एक्ट करते हुए शोपिया पुलिस एसओजी और 34 आरआर जो आर्मी की है और बाकी सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस ने उस घर का मुहासरा किया और मुहासरे के दौरान जब सर्च करने की कोशिश की गई तो वहां से गोलियों का तबादला हुआ जिसके बाद एक एनकाउंटर शुरू हो गया ये एनकाउंटर आज सुबह तक चला और इस एनकाउंटर में एक टेररिस्ट जो था उसी एलईडी से वाबस्ता जिसका नाम बिलाल भट्ट था जो कि चक चोलन का रहने वाला था वो न्यूट्रलाइज हुआ सर काफी इंस्टेंट्स में वो इन्वॉल्व होता है उसकी वो का पहले सस्पेंशियस रहा है एक कैरेक्टर जो कि ओजीडब्ल्यू भी रहा है वहाँ पे और बाद में उसने जो है एक्टिव टेरर ग्रुप एलिटी को ज्वाइन किया गया किया उसने उसी इलाके में एक पुराने समय में एक आर्मी अफसर को की किलिंग में इन्वॉल्व था और बाद में कुछ माइनॉरिटी किलिंग्स में भी इन्वॉल्व था Jammu and Kashmir has witnessed a rapid development after the abrogation of Article 370.
There has been a decline in terror-related incidents and cross-border infiltration since then. However, in the past few days, many terrorist groups backed by Pakistan are trying to infiltrate in Jammu and Kashmir to disrupt peace in the region. Particularly, terror groups such as Lashkar e Taiba and Jaish e Mohammed have been the Pakistan's establishment's preferred tools towards fighting India in Kashmir. Recently, while addressing Army's annual press conference, India's Army Chief General Manoj Pandey stated that India's adversaries are playing an active role in aiding terrorists and terror-related activities in Jammu and Kashmir. His comments were seen as a reference to Pakistan's support to cross-border terrorism. The Army Chief's comments come after multiple terror attacks in Poonch and Rajouri areas, including an ambush of two military vehicles in the former district last month in which four soldiers lost their lives. The responsibility for the attack was claimed by People's Anti-Fascist Front, which is linked to Pak-based Jaish e Mohammed terror outfit that has been banned by India. Now, if you see, after 2003, or by 2003, the terrorism in that area was fully disseminated, and then you have peace and stability returning there, or established there till about 2017-18. Now, because of situation getting or becoming normal in the valley, this is one area which our adversaries have been active in, in terms of abating terrorism, encouraging proxy tanzims operating in this area. But Looking at the statistics, last year, last three years, we have about 45 terrorists who have been eliminated in this area. In the last year, we have had in this region about five infiltration attempts which have been thwarted. About six terrorists were eliminated there. And even in the hinterland, about 14 terrorists have been neutralized. Pakistan's actions expose it as a state that supports terrorism and aims to instill fear among the people of Kashmir. Nevertheless, these heinous acts will not derail Jammu and Kashmir's path towards development as Indian security forces remain resolute in countering these sinister plots. In the spotlight once more, the distressing issue of enforced disappearances in Balochistan has garnered widespread attention, seeking impassioned calls for accountability and justice from human rights activists. The recent protest against Pakistan's atrocities on Baloch people has now reached the White House. Members of the Balochistan diaspora staged protests outside the White House against enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in Balochistan. The protests have been continuing for the last 18 days. The protesters are demanding that the United Nations Fact-Finding Committee visit Balochistan and make inquiries regarding the matter of enforced disappearances and also push to make an immediate recovery of all missing persons. We have this report. In October of 2023, Balaj Molabaksh, a 20-year-old from Turbat, Balochistan, was abducted from his home by unidentified individuals. Despite his family filing a missing complaint, they heard nothing for nearly a month, even after a street protest over the matter. On November 21, Balach was finally presented in a Turbat court, appearing visibly weak and potentially mistreated. Tragically, just two days later, the family received the devastating news that Balach had been killed while in custody. This incident triggered a surge in protests across Balochistan. With thousands led by activist Dr. Mahrang Baloch marching to Islamabad. Dr. Mahrang, facing adversity from Pakistani security forces, spearheads the protest 
against extrajudicial killings. The sit-in protest in Islamabad continues with numerous Baloch families seeking the safe recovery of missing persons. The protest against Pakistan's actions has now also transcended borders reaching the White House. Baloch diaspora members recently staged a demonstration questioning Pakistan's enforced disappearances of Baloch people. I'm here today because there's a Baloch genocide happening and it's been happening since partition and ba Pakistan annexed Balochistan in 1947 and you know we're here today because many Baloch people have been murdered and they have been genocided and kidnapped by the Pakistani army and military. And today we're here to stand with Baloch people that are still in Balochistan, um, that weren't um, sent here in exile, you know. Um, and we're here to stand with them and to stand with those families because what is happening is atrocious. Um, it is a human rights violation and it should stop. You know, we want a free Balochistan where Pakistan does not have the power over us to, you know, commit these atrocities. And, you know, we're here for a free Balochistan and for an end to the genocide. Balochistan's history is marked by regular insurgencies following Pakistan's annexation of the autonomous Baloch state of Kalat in 1948. Baloch groups have consistently clashed with Pakistani security forces, demanding their rights and autonomy for ethnic Baloch regions or complete freedom from the clutches of Islamabad. Civilians have suffered greatly from these conflicts, facing unlawful detentions and extrajudicial killings by military, police and paramilitary personnel. <laughs> हमारे लोग गलियों में गायब नहीं हैं हमारे लोगों को रियासत ने दिन दहाड़े स्कूलों में यूनिवर्सिटीओं में कॉलेजों में घरों में उठाया है क्योंकि हमें वो मालूम है कि वो रियासती फौज है पाकिस्तानी पैरामिलिट्री फोर्सेस है क्योंकि हमारे लोग अपने सरजमीन की बात करते हैं अपनी आजादी की बात करते हैं ये रियासत जो है इस, इस तरह की अफंड इस्तेमाल कर रही है ये मैं समझता हूं रियासत की भूखलाहट है रियासत खौफ की उसमें है कि बलूचिस्तान बलूचिस्तान जरूर फ्रीडम आजादी अपना ले लेगा और रियासत क्योंकि जब हम आजादी की बात करते हैं रियासत हमें उठाती है हमें मारती है हमें गायब करती है और ये एक डीप स्टेट है क्योंकि डीप स्टेट में जब आप बात करोगे डीप स्टेट कोशिश यही करती है कि आपकी जुबान काटे ताकि आप बात न करें ओवर द इयर्स थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल हैव वैनिश्ड इन बलूचिस्तान एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ अ ब्रूटल क्रैक डाउन लेड बाय द मिलिट्री Global media outlets have time and again highlighted the discovery of hundreds of bodies of suspected armed separatists and political activists in Balochistan province, pointing to extrajudicial killings by Pakistani security forces. According to a recent report by PANK, the Human Rights Department of Baloch National Movement, there have been 54 enforced disappearances, 32 torture victims, and two extrajudicial killings in December 2023. It is a tool by the Pakistani state to silence the oppressed people of the poor province. Families of the disappeared people suffer significant harm. They live with continuous uncertainty about the fate or whereabouts of their loved ones. Some of these missing persons' relatives have passed away with the pain and suffering in their chests but their loved ones never returned back to them and they died waiting. These grievances have fueled protests both within Balochistan and in Western countries. Human Rights Watch, an international non-governmental organization, has released a new report stating that the Taliban has intensified and expanded its suppression of human rights, particularly women's rights in Afghanistan. According to the World Report 2024, the Taliban increasingly enforced repressive policies in 2023, including the suppression of women's protests, arbitrary detention of women activists, the disappearance of some women after detention, and their torture and that of their family members. Have a look. The 
human rights situation in Afghanistan continued to deteriorate in 2023 as the Taliban committed widespread human rights violations, particularly against women and girls. Afghanistan remained the only country where women and girls could not access secondary and higher education. Human Rights Watch, an international non-governmental organization headquartered in New York, has released a new report stating that the Taliban has intensified and expanded its suppression of human rights, particularly women's rights, in Afghanistan. According to the World Report 2024, the Taliban increasingly enforced repressive policies in 2023, including the suppression of women's protests, arbitrary detention of women activists, the disappearance of some women after detention, and their torture and that of their family members. It added that the ban on women's work has deprived many Afghan women of their livelihoods and linked a part of Afghanistan's economic crisis to the restrictions on women's employment. Recently, at a U.S. Congress session, Reena Amiri, U.S. Special Envoy for Human Rights in Afghanistan, said that the situation in Afghanistan has severely deteriorated in the last two years. The human rights situation in Afghanistan has severely deteriorated. Members of ethnic and religious minority communities, particularly Hazaras, are exposed to escalating threats and violence. Media freedom has been drastically curtailed, and vulnerable groups live in a state of peril. Restrictions against women and girls have been the most extreme. The Taliban have systemically targeted Afghan women and girls with more than 50 discriminatory edicts at the national level and many more at the subnational level. They have attempted to erase Afghan women and girls from society, revoking girls' access to education beyond the primary level, limiting women's employment, and depriving them of the opportunity to put food on the table. For a large portion of its history, Afghanistan has experienced violence and injustice due to decades of armed conflict. However, since seizing power two years ago, Talibani rulers have severely restricted human rights in the war-torn country. Institutions designed to support human rights have been severely limited or shut down completely. The Taliban government is conducting extrajudicial executions, arbitrary arrests, torture and unlawful detention of perceived opponents with impunity, creating an atmosphere of fear. Moreover, the de facto rulers of the country have ordered the judges to impose Sharia law. Public executions and floggings are being reported in the country. In addition, the nation has entered a severe economic and humanitarian crisis with two-thirds of the populace currently in need of aid. They've restricted freedom of movement for women and effectively removed them from public spaces. Those who have raised their voices have faced harassment, detention and violence at the hands of the Taliban. Given the Taliban's track record and extreme ideology, the road ahead continues to look extremely challenging. Yet, even as we acknowledge these difficulties, we must remain resolute and support Afghan women and girls. If we do not continue to stand up for the rights of Afghan women, we put at peril women's rights everywhere. Taliban has created an increasingly intimidating atmosphere forcing many media outlets to close. The space for free media has drastically shrunk. Many journalists have begun to self-censor as a result of the increasing restrictions they faced, which included arbitrary arrests, illegal detentions and torture in response to reporting that criticized the Taliban. While in custody, Journalists are facing severe kinds of torture. Numerous journalists have left the nation. Afghanistan's economic instability and isolation from the outside world have made the situation worse.
And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.